And unsurprisingly, I got four rejections. No interviews, no offers. Yeah, it was really quite sad. I'm Daniela, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing the three main reasons that I believe I got rejected from medical school the first time that I applied. I hope that by sharing my personal experience, it allows you to navigate the medical admissions process a little bit easier so that you can avoid making the same mistakes that I made, and hopefully it will give you a higher chance of getting into medical school the first time round. So to give you some background, I always wanted to become a doctor. I did biology, maths and Spanish at A level, but sadly didn't get the grades that I needed to apply to medical school straight from university. So I decided to do a year of nursing, which I actually didn't end up finishing, and then did biomedical science instead hoping that one day that would open the door for graduate entry medicine in the future. During my final year of university, I decided to apply to medicine for both undergraduate and graduate entry medicine courses. But I made so many mistakes throughout that application. It was honestly so awful. And unsurprisingly, I got four rejections. Like no interviews, no offers. Yeah, it was really quite sad. Okay, so let's look at what those three reasons were. So the very first thing that I would say was that I really lacked preparation and I had a really poor understanding of what the application process was going to be like. I thought that because I had applied to study at university before, once when I applied to nursing and the second time when I applied to biomedical science, that it was just gonna be exactly the same. I genuinely thought, how hard could this be? I have done this twice. I also scored really highly in my biomedical science degree. So because I had good grades, I thought that that was all I really needed to secure my spot at medical school. Because of this, I didn't spend anywhere near enough time on everything else that I had to do for the medical school application. There is so much more that is required for a medical school application, including work experience, an entrance exam, and a really solid personal statement things that I had no experience in. I also didn't realize that some medical schools have different requirements to others. For example, some schools say that the UCAT exam is a very important part of their admissions process. Some will say that the SJT is included where others won't. And some medical schools place a huge emphasis on your work experience. The important point here is that every medical school will look at things slightly differently. There is no one size fits all. And so it's really, really important that you spend the time preparing and doing your research so you know exactly what's required of you. Also, if you are a mature student or you have already studied a degree, then that adds another layer on top because some medical schools have more places available for graduate entry medics than others. I would highly suggest that you look into medical school admissions data try and have a look online. This should all be publicly available, but this will give you a really good understanding of previous year's admissions rates. If you also feel unsure about the process and you would like some tailored and specific support, then I would recommend that you check out the FutureDoc website for more information on how we can help you. Okay, so now moving on to the second reason. This would definitely be my UCAT score. I didn't score too well the first time that I sat the UCAT, and that's probably because I thought that it was an exam that you could not prepare for. I did do some research and I watched some YouTube videos and I even practiced some online questions, but my mistake was not having a technique or having strategies that would help me through the exam. The thing about the UCAT is that it's not necessarily difficult. The questions in and of themselves aren't that hard. And if you had all of the time in the world, you would probably be able to answer the question correctly. The problem with the UCAT is the time limit. You really don't have a lot of time to answer the questions, which makes it really difficult. It's also not just about having raw knowledge and information, but about critical thinking and decision making all while under pressure. And despite what people say about it not being something that you can study for, it definitely is something that you can improve on with time and practice. A lot of medical schools place a heavy emphasis on the UCAS score because they get so many applications every year 
year, thousands of applicants. So if they set a UCAT score, they can use that to get rid of applications that don't meet that cutoff. If you are considering applying to medical or dental school, then make sure that you familiarize yourself with the entrance exams. Make sure that you understand the exam structure, that you practice under timed conditions, and that you work on improving your weaknesses for each section. If you need more help with the UCAT exam or with the GAMSAT exam, which is another entrance exam, then make sure to check out our playlists, which has really useful exam specific content. And finally, the third reason I got rejected from medical school was because of my university choices. I made the mistake of applying to the most competitive universities and London-based universities, and my application wasn't that strong. I just wanted to get into the best or the most elite university, and I didn't take any time to think about what would be the best for me. Again, I didn't look into how many places were available or what the competition ratios were, and I'm pretty sure that I didn't meet the UCAT cutoff for at least one of the universities that I applied to, which meant that my application was automatically rejected. They didn't even look at the rest of what I'd written. Having a strategic approach when you are thinking about where to apply is crucial. Make sure that you research medical schools thoroughly, that you understand their specific requirements and that you play to your strengths. You want to make sure that you apply to schools where your grades and your background are most strategic and applicable so that you can increase your chances of getting in statistically. If you are thinking of where to apply, I would encourage you to make a balanced list of your choices that includes an aspirational choice as well as a safer choice whilst ensuring that you're not just aiming for the big names. Again this is something that we advise our students on at FutureDoc. Being strategic about where you apply is so important so head to our website if you would like more information. Try not to be too disheartened if you are facing setbacks. Remember that the journey into medical or dental school can be long and challenging and there can also be various different routes for you to get there. That is everything for today. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.